<clears throat> Good evening, everyone. Well, I've entitled this video tonight, Warfare. Warfare. Paul talks about this warfare, man. It's a real warfare. And it's a present warfare. It's not a past warfare. Now, Christ has already won the victory. Christ has already said it is finished. But we're still in a warfare as long as we're in these bodies down here on this earth. And there's been a lot of talk about the seventh chapter of Romans. And, you know, there's basically two different views on it. Some say this is this is pre-conversion of Paul, but Paul is talking about it in the present while he was after his conversion because he said um, he talks about that well we're going to get into it in a little bit but anyway I'm going to read through this and I'm going to make some comments on it knowing ye not brethren for I speak to them that know the law how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth for the woman which hath a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth but the husband be dead she's loose from the law of her husband so then if while her husband liveth she be married to another man she shall be called an adulteress but if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin which were by the law did work in our members, to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead, wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law, for I had not known lust, except the law had said, Thou shalt not covet. But sin taking occasion by the commandment wrought in me all manner of concupiscence, for without the law sin was dead. For I was alive without the law once, but when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. And the commandment which was ordained to life I found to be unto death. For sin taking occasion by the commandment deceived me, and by it slew me. Wherefore the law is holy, and the commandment holy, and just, and good. Was then that which is good made death unto me? God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. For we know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. Now notice he's saying here what he is now. For that which I do, I allow not. For what I would that I do, that do I not. But what I hate, that do I. That's in the present. For then I do that which I would not. I consent of the law that it is good. Now then it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Paul said that sin still dwells in his body. For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For to will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good that I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. I find a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man, <clears throat> but... I see another law in my members warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. 
O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord, so with the mind I myself serve the law of God, but with the flesh the law of sin. Well, this is quite a quite a chapter. It's been argued with over as much as the book of James has been argued over with. But the point is that Paul is saying that we are in a warfare between the spirit and the flesh and anyone who's a Christian who denies that is not being truthful <laughs> at least that's been my experience we are in a warfare and there are fightings within and fightings without and Satan's right in the middle of the whole thing and and if we're one of God's children, God's in the middle of the whole thing too, Christ. Now we have been forgiven of all of our sins, but we are still to strive against sin, okay? And we are, we are to put on the whole armor of God that will be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. We're to put on the breastplate of righteousness, the sword of the Spirit, the helmet of salvation. And so, you know, there's a lot of people that deny we're in a warfare. There's some people that want to even deny that evil exists in the world. The whole school of Christianity is into the denial of evil in the world. And you know why why do you think the bible says that the devil goes about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour and he tries to oppress god's people why do you think it says that he is the prince and the power of the air that works in the children of disobedience and so we are in a warfare now I like the last verse of that chapter. It gives me some hope. Paul concludes that chapter by saying, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So with the mind I myself serve the law of God but the, the, with the flesh, the law of sin. And he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? Well, you know, he. when we go on to the next chapter, Romans 8, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. You know, and for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit the things of the Spirit. Be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, it's not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit, if so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now if the man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And he says, if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if we live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if ye live through the spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. The Spirit itself beareth witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And he says that we are saved by hope, but hope that is not seen is not hope. He says the Spirit helpeth our infirmities. And we have the great passage of Romans 8:28 down through 39. And 
he says in 35 who shall separate us from the love of Christ okay well we have victory in Christ over the flesh you know and I thank God for giving us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ that's the that's the bottom line you know we sing that song oh victory in Jesus my Savior forever he sought me and bought me with his redeeming love he loved me ere I knew him, and all my love is due him. He plunged me to victory beneath the crimson blood. So that's what's on my mind tonight. I hope you'll think about these passages, and let's not deny that we're in a warfare, but let's also affirm that Christ will give us the victory through his Son, Jesus Christ. May the good Lord be with you tonight is my prayer. God bless.